Hello children, Auntie Debbie here, Nanny Debbie if you wish. And today I found a wonderful book in my parents' old, old bookcases. Now this book was called Bible Treasures. It's a very, very old book. As you can see, it's falling apart. But you know, it was around when I was a very little girl. <laughs> and I'm not such a little girl anymore, but I do love reading stories to my grandies. And I know that you'll love reading, hearing about this story. And it's called The Good Samaritan. And there's the picture of The Good Samaritan. A man was once travelling from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho. As he was going along, suddenly a band of thieves swept upon him and attacked him. He fought as well as he could, but they were too much for him. And presently, having taken everything he possessed, they rode off swiftly, leaving him lying by the roadside. He was in a sorry state, badly wounded and could not even stand on his feet. He just lay on the ground groaning, feeling that at any moment he was likely to die. As the countryside was lonely and few people passed by, but at last he saw someone coming and by his clothes recognised him as a priest. Joy entered his heart because of course the priest was supposed to take care of the people. He moaned. He managed to gasp feebly, help, help. And that he, then he was so weak that he just closed his eyes and waited for the priest to come to him. The priest, however, was thinking of other things. He was thinking of God and the temple which he served. He was saying his prayers to himself and thinking what a good man he was. He heard the feeble cry for help and looking round saw the wounded man lying on the ground. But he was just in the middle of a prayer and he did not like to be interrupted in this fashion. And so he did a dreadful thing. He just walked past the wounded man without another glance and continued on his way, still thinking what a good and holy person he was, never giving another thought to the poor soul who was nearly dying. And there you go, that's him going past him. And there's the poor injured man yelling out, look, I need some help, but maybe he would listen. And the wounded man wept as he saw the priest go and wondered what he was to do except lie here and die. But after a while there came another traveller and this time it was a Levite. Now the Levites were very important people and this particular one was hurrying back to Jerusalem where he had matters to attend to. He was thinking of these matters which were connected with affairs of the city when he too heard that sad little cry. Oh help me! He looked round and just as the priest had done saw the wounded man lying on the ground but unlike the priest he realised instantly what had happened. Thieves he thought. There have been thieves around here and they may still be somewhere about waiting to attack someone else. I must hurry. I must get away from this place. It would not do for me to be attacked by thieves. They would rob me too and maybe kill me. And I must not be a bit delayed, for I am a very important man. I must hurry. And there he is, running away from the wounded man. And that is exactly what he did. As fast as he could, he hurried away, anxious to reach the city where it was safe. And the poor man, now much weaker, gave up hope entirely. And so he did not know that another traveller came along and did not cry out for help a third time. But the third traveller saw him and stopped. Now this man came from Samaria, whose people were called Samaritans. They were not very well thought of in Jerusalem because they were not rich or important people. And their country was a poor country. And so the people lived in a very simple and humble manner. And for this reason, many people looked down upon them and despised them and did not treat them very kindly. But this Samaritan, seeing the wounded man lying on the ground, stopped, got down from his horse and had a look at him, and saw that he was so badly wounded that he was likely to die. But he was resolved to save him if possible, for it never entered his head that he himself might be in danger of attack from the thieves. First he took off his own coat and placed it round the wounded man. Then he bathed his wounds and dressed them with ointment and bandages. And presently the wounded man opened his eyes and realised that he was being cared for. There, how do you feel now? asked the Samaritan kindly. Come, drink some of this wine. 
He held the wine to the man's lips, who managed to drink a little, and then the Samaritan coaxed him to eat some food. Already the wounded man was feeling stronger. He managed to get the sick man onto his horse, and then still supporting him and walking at his side, they at long last reached the inn. Here the Samaritan had the sick man put to bed immediately, and all night long he sat beside him, looking after him. And when morning came, the man was sleeping peacefully, and the Samaritan saw that he was on the road to getting better. He doesn't need me now, he thought. I can get along. Ah, but this poor man has no money to pay the landlord. I must attend to that. So he went to the landlord and said, Look, here is some money to pay for this man's bed. Look after him carefully, and if it costs any more, I will pay you when I come back this way. And there he is, talking to the landlord, see? And there's the man lying in bed, but looking a lot better than he was before. And then he went, the Scots Samaritan, to attend at last to his own business, not thinking one little bit what a good man he was, but only happy that he had been able to save a life and bring comfort when it was needed. Isn't that a beautiful story? The Good Samaritan. <laughs>